Robert Hubbard and Manja.tv streaming live on Twitch and at Manja.tv. This is Cookie Vamp 86, stocking stuffers that rule. You know, this is a multi-dimensional segment. Last week I uh, started out the Party in the Kitchen series with a three-chord tune, Home. Let's review it. <laughs> That's it, man. That's the chords for home. Talking heads, killer tune. Who doesn't love that tune? Please leave the room. And uh, this week, I'm going to stick with the theme of three chord tunes. Super easy for partying in the kitchen. The party always ends up in the kitchen. And uh, if you know just a couple three chord tunes, you can get it rocking. And then we're going to get on to stocking stuffers. And uh, if you want to join the chat, you have to go to Twitch, uh, look up, uh, search One Half Manja TV, and uh, you can fire on the chat. If not, just hang out and watch. We're, I'm going to talk stocking stuffers, give you some ideas, and then show you why the Manja Rub is a must for stocking stuffers. I'm going to cook up some Alaskan wild caught cad, inspired by my friend Steve from uh, Cafe Services, who's the Comcast corporate chef in New Hampshire, and he went with some uh, Atlantic cod when I was there, but I'm going to do the exact same thing he did to show you how easy it is to do. All right, but this week, the song is All Along the Watchtower, written by Bob Dylan, recent uh, award winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, and uh, popularized by little Jimi Hendrix, but super easy song, right? some kind of way out of here said the joker to the thief there's too much confusion i can't get no relief businessmen they drink my wine plowmen dig my earth well you get the idea all right three chords ridiculously simple right? And uh, you have the whole kitchen rocking with three chords, right? That's going to be the theme for these kitchen party vamps is three chord tunes. I got a couple more. If you know a three chord tune, how about sharing it with me at uh, bob at manja.tv. And uh, I can play three chords. I know that. I can, I can hammer out three chords. All right, so let's get to it. Let's get to the subject of the day. Stocking stuffers, first of all, quick one, right out of the box. Key punch for toothpicks, for toothpicks, for guitar picks. Guitar pick punch, all right? Look at that. You take an old credit card, you can uh, pop out, or, you know, uh, hotel key cards. That's what this one was, hotel key card. Now a punch. How about the ridiculous hat? Too hot for that. All right, let's bring in the chair, sit down, get comfortable, and uh, let's talk stocking stuffers. First of all, I didn't know, no written record of stocking stuff or stockings and where it came from. No written record, nobody for sure where the tradition starts. Folklore has it that uh, St. Nicholas, upon hearing of a story about a man in a village, with three daughters and no money. And back in the day, you had to have money to marry your daughters off. Uh, and he was worried that he'd die and his daughters would never get married off. St. Nicholas, upon hearing this, passed by the man's window and threw three bags of gold in. Some people say one of them landing in a stocking on the hearth or as, you, you know, old, old, uh, Fireplaces, they'd hang their stockings actually to dry, right, overnight. Anyway, who knows where it came from. All I know is I never, ever had stocking or stocking stuffers as a kid. 
And who could blame the mom with 11 children? I mean, you're not hanging 11 stockings and then stuffing 11. I mean, we didn't even have, we didn't even have wrapped presents. Not a thing in the Heffernan household. No wrapped presents, man. Again, 11 kids, wrapping 11. Presents for 11 kids, forget about it. Not happening. Present on the set. Um, so stockings and stocking stuffers, yeah, you know, I only became uh, fond of the idea as an adult. Uh, and, you know, stocking stuffers, and by the way, back in the day, that was pretty much Christmas, was what was in the stocking. There were no other presents. It was like what was in the stocking. That's what you got. All right, businessmen, they drink my wine. Hold on, a little parched. So let's get to it. Stocking stuffers. And uh, I'm going to continue on a theme from last year that experiential gifts are better than anything else. All right, because you remember doing things and having experiences. Who remembers the stuff that they got last Christmas? I mean, who does? Does anybody remember the stuff that they got? You know? I mean, when you got a stocking, you have a stocking stuffer. Hold on. I kind of remember what I got last year. There it is. I got a, a killer lump of coal. Now, you might think a lump of coal, that's terrible, but the lump of coal is actually a very nice thing to have. You put it on your desk, and it absorbs all the bad juju that goes around. All right? So, uh... I've had the lump of coal now for uh, a while, and it's really uh, done done wonders for me. All right, look at that, great, great lump of coal. <laughs> All right, before I continue any further, though, I got to tell you that a couple things you can get for your stocking stuffers are gift certificates to SellerAngels.com or Chicago Helicopter Experience. Uh, please keep that in mind as I travel through my list. All right, here we go. Number one, and again, experiential things. So like stocking stuffers, it's easy. You get stuff, you put it in the stocking, you wrap it, all right? First pedicure of my life a couple months ago with my sister Elizabeth. And hold on. And um, a fabulous time. All right, who knew that a pedicure could be so much fun? So my idea for a stocking stuffer is how about six pedicures, one every other month, right? For the whole year, you go, you buy the, 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 the coupon or the, the, the pedicures, right? But, but you buy them for you and somebody, all right? So now you got six pedicure dates or just outings with somebody to last through the whole year. What a great idea that is. And, and I got to tell you something, man. I, I'm a huge fan of the pedicure now after doing just one in my life. Um, I mean, I'm talking particular attention to detail to your feet. And I, I highly recommend this for guys. A lot of guys are going to look, you know, a pedicure, I don't get a pedicure. You should get a pedicure because your feet are disgusting. All right? You need somebody to take care of your feet better than you do. And you might as well have a nice time, sit with the person that you're doing the pedicure thing with, you have a nice conversation, you get your feet massaged, your, your calves massaged. You can pick a color if you want. You know, I'm not here to judge, whatever you want. You get one next week, you go Christmas colors, whatever. But uh, again, it's an experiential thing. The person that you give this pedicure thing to is, you can, first of all, you're gonna have six excursions with them throughout the year, every other month. And forget about it, you're gonna have a great time, all right? Another thought that I had on uh, stocking stuffers, heirloom seeds for the garden, all right? And let's go heirloom, all right? Let's, uh, let's keep the seed diversity intact by keeping the old seed lines vibrant. But you don't just give them heirloom seeds, right? You give them heirloom seeds with a date in April that you're going to show up and help them plant the, plant the garden or plant a flower garden or a vegetable garden. The point is that you're giving them the seeds and you're also giving them a commitment to hang out and spend some time with them uh, and plant the seeds, all right? Heirloom, heirloom, really not sure how you pronounce that. We need an English major. Heirloom seeds and an afternoon of planting in the spring. What could be better than that? All right, how about just a simple hat as a stocking stuffer? But a hat, like a, a knit hat, 
that you might go skiing, right? But uh, include the lift tickets. How about that? The lift tickets in it. Or maybe a baseball cap. I had you given this gift, a baseball cap, and actually gone to a Cub game this year, you were going to have a memory that would last a lifetime because guess what? They did it this year, opening night, by the way. And speaking of experiential, I received the hat back after 30 years from my college friend Perry, right, who kept it safe and sound for 30 years and returned the hat and an experiential outing, a tailgate at Western Michigan University, undefeated, by the way. They should be in the top 10. I, the whole ranking system's for shit. WMU Broncos should be in the top 10. It's ridiculous that they're not. Undy ran the table. All right, enough about that. So you get him a hat. How about a ski hat, a golf hat? And you and, and then you, you, you pick out a course that's killer and you, and you actually buy the green fees now. And by the way, you can get killer deals on green fees if you buy now for next year. I mean, killer deals. You get stuff 50, 60, 70% off uh, on some great courses. The ones I'm familiar with in Wisconsin, the Bull and the Bog, those two courses in particular, you just get a great deal if you buy them now. All right, how about a fishing hat, all right? And a fishing license, right? And a date to go fishing. Let's wet a line for God's sakes. We gotta get the fishing thing back going. So a, a hat in there, right? How about some tea? Simple little thing for the stocking, some tea. How about the Shangri-La organic breakfast tea? This stuff is so good. Um, but along with the tea, how about, you know, 12 tea parties? How about you commit to hanging out once a month for a high tea, right? Now, if you're in Colorado or Oregon or Washington or about half the states now, you can really have a high tea and uh, have a nice time, you know? No worries about having the high tea. Uh, what else do I got? How about a cookbook, right? Even a paperback will fit in. You know, paperback cookbook, bong, you put it in. But again, you give the cookbook and then maybe you slip in a calendar and once a month you hang out and tackle one of the recipes in the cookbook. All right, the cookbook's cool. Who doesn't like a cookbook? But uh, cookbooks end up on shelves and don't get looked at a lot. Let's just be honest, they just don't. But if you put the effort of showing up at that person's house or picking a time when you can go and put together one of the recipes for the, maybe it's every other month, maybe, you know, you, you just, you don't like seeing them that much. I don't know, but if you give somebody a cookbook, how about you hang out with them and actually cook something from the cookbook, right? The idea is, is the experiential thing. That is the idea. That's that's what I'm driving at here. That when you hang out and you do things together, those are memories that are going to last. And who cares about this stuff, man? This stuff's meaningless. I was just at Goodwill today looking for a second HD camera. Didn't find one. But there's a lot of stuff in there, too. And uh, I just can't say it enough, all right? Forget about the stuff. Start hanging out more and uh, and cooking. All right. And last but not least, all right, is the rub. And right now, Cyber Monday, we have a special on the website, Manja.tv. Go to the uh, shop and go to the rub, and there's 10 bags for 40 bucks. I'm telling you, four bucks a bag. You are going to be an all star and a hero giving the rub to people because uh, not only are you going to be able to give them the rub and they're going to love it, but they'll probably, you know, you can give it the rub and say, listen, you know, I'm coming over when you do the shrimp, all right? Make sure you invite me. But here's another idea for the rub and the gift, and that's to maybe challenge somebody or inspire somebody to start a barbecue team, right, and go compete in a barbecue competition. And if you don't have the full competence on to put a team together, how about you start small and do a neighborhood cook-off, either a barbecue competition, chili competition, a family barbecue competition. Um, and make sure you got a lot of a winning team will have the manja rub on hand. That is the secret ingredient to it all. All right. So the rub special at uh, on Cyber Monday. And uh, you can visit the website. 
But now let's do some cooking because I got my portable gas stove. Uh, compliments of Steve, his idea. He uses, he uses the same thing professionally in, uh, in New Hampshire at the Comcast Corporate Kitchen, uh, especially when he does Fish Fridays. And this is exactly how he does his, one of the options he gives for fish. It's a Cajun fish with the manja rub, and it couldn't be simpler, all right? It couldn't be simpler. First of all, what do we, add, what do we say about how hot do we get the pan? Manja Nation. Oh, and by the way, let's get the over-under going right now on when the smoke alarm goes off, because we found out last week that, yeah, we got a smoke alarm and it works, all right? <laughs> the key... The key is to get the pan too hot. That's what you get. All right. Look at that. Martin, Cellar Angels, showing up. I don't know if he's still in Hawaii, but uh, we got a chat. All right. This We're going to grow from this. All right. The, the Twitch thing is going to grow. We're going to get a bunch of people chatting on Twitch. Martin says he's a big fan of pedicures. And... Uh, I'm pretty sure he doesn't go get a pedicure alone. I don't know about that. Maybe he does. But a great date idea, by the way. Great data. You get you get to show your, your feminine side or your soft side. Go with your gal and set up. And by the way, you got to set up the pedicure. You just, here's a surprise. We're going to go do this and go get a pedicure. All right? It's a great idea. It's a great date idea. All right? So how hot's the pan? Too hot. That's how hot it is. Too hot. All right? Last week, and how do you know when it's too hot? You get a little something in there and see if it starts spitting. Hear that? Yeah, a little spit. It gets hot quick. This portable gas stove gets hot quick. All right, all on here. We got, we got Alaskan wild caught. All right, I highly re recommend the wild caught stuff too. And I got to tell you something. I highly recommend the frozen wild caught because they catch it on the boat. Most of them, they get harvested right away and flat froze, flash frozen. I was at the store today and uh, the fish counter was smelling up half of the grocery store. How possibly fresh could that fish be? I mean, seriously, how could it be that fresh? Anyway, look at that. Hot. It's hot. You take the... Whoop. You take the cod, both sides in the rub, just get her going. And this is the fish, popular, also known as the sweet. Look at, listen to that. Put it in and let her go. Hold on. All right, we actually got a kitchen work in here. I guarantee you, I guarantee you right now, the uh, smoke alarm is going to go off. And that's a guarantee. I'm going with the Sun Cocoa Organic Oil. Steve told me that olive oil is a little bit too low of a smoke point. So cooking fish hot, especially in a skillet, you want to go with an oil with a higher smoke point. This is uh, sunflower and coconut oil. And hold on, I'm gonna open the door now just to get ahead of this. All right, he said let it go a little bit, give it a little shake. All right. And the other thing too, man, don't be, don't be afraid. If you don't think it's going to cook uh, all the way through, is to give it a little cover. I do it. The, pro shut, the pros maybe don't, but that's what I do in the kitchen. If I want to make sure that cook, that fish is cooked all the way through, bon, give it a little cover up. All right, and I got a little kale salad going here. All right, so we're just going to go. So the sweet, we're going to go blackened because this becomes a blackened fish. Blackened. Alaskan wild caught cod with the sweet or the fish mojo on it. Same rub, actually. Um, I just put that over a kale salad and forget about it. 
ridiculous. I don't know who's got the timer going, but this hasn't been much time. And that's one thing about fish that a lot of people make the mistake is fish does not. Oh my goodness, look at that. All right, you know, I'm working on the camera stuff here, camera angles, because if you're going to see this, I'm going to show it to you. You got to be patient though, all right? I don't have all the camera angles set up yet, but that first split, beautifully blackened. All right, we're going to turn it down a little bit because we don't want to blacken it too fast because it's got to cook all the way through. All right, then right onto the kale salad. <coughs> and uh, you're talking about a lean, mean fighting machine kind of a meal. All right, who else has got ideas for stocking stuffers? If you do, share them online with us. Um, great experiential st stocking stuffers are the best. Uh, here, here's one thing I wanted to mention. You gotta cook. Every cook needs tongs, all right? And the better the tong, I mean, uh, cooks are, you know, sometimes they don't like to spend a ton of money on, on different things. Like they'll, they'll splurge and spend money on like a killer pan and things. Tongs, they go through tongs, man. Tongs are a great thing for the cook in your life. You can't have enough tongs. They go missing. They're like, they're like reading glasses. Like where are the tongs? Who's got my tongs? That's what happens with tongs. So you got a cook you're buying for, get them some tongs. You can't go wrong. We're talking about three or four minutes aside on the cod. Oh, goodness sake. And it's already starting to split. Still a little bit to go in the middle. Now, Steve only flips it once, and I can see why. Just, now the rub's gonna caramelize up on the bottom, and that is that's the money, man. That is the money. Look at that. All right, this has got to go about another minute, and I'm gonna pull it out and show it to you, and it's gonna. And then I'm gonna eat it. By the way, I'm gonna demolish it. Um. All right, so let's go over it again, one one time, one through. The manja approved best experiential, experiential stocking stuffer gifts, all right? We're talking coupons or uh, prepaid booklets or something like that. You go to your local salon and get six pedicures. You're actually getting 12 because you're going with the person, all right? And then you're going to set up a pedicure date for, look at that, I lost it. That's why I turned it off. I was wondering what happened. That's what happens in live cooking. I'm like, why is this thing not blackening on the other side? <laughs> Six pedicures every other month. Heirloom seeds. All right, get some heirloom seeds and then set up a spring planting date for those seeds. All right, throw in a hat, any kind of hat, but make sure you put in green fees, right? Or, or tickets to a ball game or a hockey game or a basketball game. You know, Mark Cuban said it, and I mentioned it last year. You don't remember what the score was three years from now or that game you went to, but you remember hanging out with your pops, right? You, you, you definitely remember that. Um, a fishing cap. How about some fishing lures and a fishing license? All right, again, you're spurring on the commitment to hang out, all right, and really form memories. How about a box of tea, right, and 12 high teas? And some of them might be super high. How about a cookbook and then commit to hanging out once a month and tackling one of the awesome recipes in the thousands and thousands of cookbooks out there out there. I mean, there's so much too many to even consider. There it is. It is done. Oh, does that look good? All right. And then also for buy some rub. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to lay this on this bed of kale, this kale salad. Look at it steaming, and look at how the fish has split. Oh, 
and, and the, the sweet rub's got some brown sugar in it, so it chars up and caramelizes. And then you got the heat. You got the heat off of that rub with the, uh, the Cajun spices. Hold on a second. I know I'm just talking, but I got to give it a taste now. All right, and the rub on the website right now, we're talking 10 bags for 40 bucks. You're going to stuff 10 stockings, and then you're going to have 10 people that owe you a killer meal. I mean, they don't owe it to you, but oh, my God. Now, who says that cooking has to take a lot of time and effort? Because they're wrong. That's just, oh, hold on a second. I'll, I'll be back in a second. Hold on. Get your wine at cellarangels.com. How about an experiential helicopter tour of Chicago? Use Manja or mention Manja, you get 10 bucks off that helicopter tour. Use Manja wine at Cellar Angels and they're gonna kick in the shipping one bottle to a case. If you need professional web services, check out AE3 Studios. Tell them Manja sent you and uh, I'm sure they're gonna work out a spectacular deal for you. Your dog is not behaving or your friend's dog is, for no better words, you know, an asshole. A dog that you can't stand that needs to, how about you tell them to go to Chicago Downtown Dog Chicago, tell them Manja sent you. Ari will hook you up and train your dog and show you how, in fact, dogs are relatively easy to train with the right methodology, and he's been killing it. I have never seen better trained dogs. You can check on the website my uh, segment that I did with him. Insanely good uh, results on his training method. So mention Manja on their full service package, and he's going to give you 100 bucks off. That's what I got for stacking stuffers. I really appreciate you hanging out. Uh, visit the website, and we're going to have some other live streaming content uh, on the website from now on. So when you need uh, your cooking fix fixed, just go to manja.tv, and uh, you're going to be able to see some great content. All right? Thanks for showing up. We'll see you guys next week. I'm not sure what I'm going to stream on next week. But it'll be in the kitchen again. I will have another three chord song, all right, to share. Hold on. I got my pick that I made from my uh, room key when I stayed. Uh... All right, so all on the watchtower. Let's do it one more time. It's, uh, it's A minor, F, and then F on the third uh, fret, which is actually a G. But it sounds, it's a G something. I'm not sure. All along the watchtower, princes kept the view. Men and women came and went, barefoot servants too. Outside in the distance, a wildcat hit it ground. Two riders were approaching, and the wind began to howl. All along the watchtower. Now, my brother Mark was here. He would hit that same all along the watchtower, an octave up, which I can't hit, right? And then the whole kitchen would be rocking to all along the watchtower. And you'd be like, this is the greatest party ever. And it's in the kitchen again. We're in the kitchen rocking out.